um, thank you for watching my research presentation. In the next half hour, I would like to take you on a journey, a journey through my research project. It started in 2019, and I see it as a continuing process. Let's start with my research question. How can autonomy and active learning be stimulated in a blended overclass program? You might wonder why I feel the need to research this. In my lesson practice, students rarely come in as active, self-directing, autonomous learners. However, literature and experiences of other teachers show us that students, even beginners, can learn to become active, self-directing learners. For me, the students and their development are most important. I would like them to become independent musicians. When they can set their own goals, plan their practice and reflect on it, they are ready for any challenge on their path. So along with learning to play an instrument, I believe it is very important for them to learn how to learn. So, how can a teacher support the development of autonomy-based learning? I found answers to this question in the self-determination theory of Desi and Ryan, a theory that has been extensively tested in teaching contexts. It is based on three basic psychological needs in motivation, development and wellness. These three needs are autonomy, relatedness and competence. Relatedness in the context of musical tuition means there is a supportive social structure for the musical development of the students. A supportive circle of teachers, parents and peers. Snow is falling down and down White is all from town to town As I saw limited autonomy in my students, my research focus became the question of how to be autonomy supportive in my teaching. In three research cycles, I designed and carried out teaching strategies, wrote case descriptions and observed recorded lessons, focusing on the three basic needs. <laughs> Important elements of autonomy supportive teaching are giving students choices and options where possible, providing them with opportunities to take initiative in their learning, encouraging them to create their own learning process, providing them with information, mapping and constructing autonomous self-regulatory capacities and giving them responsibility for shaping the learning context. Nee, die kan ik dus niet vinden. And what are the important elements of active learning? In the book New Learning of Simmons van der Linde and Duffy, I found answers to this question. It is all about creating opportunities for students to be involved in decisions related to their own learning. Students to have the opportunity to follow their own interests and motivation. Creating an overview of learning processes with students in three process stages through the preparatory, executive and closing learning functions. And last but not least, 
What are elements of self-regulation? In quality practice, Susan Williams describes the following. Students need to develop the ability to plan, monitor and reflect on their process in order to steer their own development. It involves being able to recognize personal strengths and weaknesses and have appropriate goals and intentions. Being able to focus and beware during playing and being able to reflect on where they are in the process and how the process went. La, fa, mi, re, mi, re, mi, fa, mi, re, do, ti, la, do, re, mi. A blended program in this setting is important. In a blended program, the online classroom serves as an extension of the live lessons and deepens skills and knowledge. It can support students in their practice, triggers and creates an ongoing learning process. Children are surrounded by devices from a very young age and these devices can be valuable learning tools. They can be used to reflect, create an overview, provide extra learning steps, present repertoire and communicate. They can also provide teachers with an opportunity to monitor the learning process in students and gain a clear content overview of the program. With the elements from the learning theories, I tailored tools for my students, inspired by and using existing examples. These tools were designed to give learners the opportunity to create an overview on their process, plan it, have choices in repertoire and strategy use, and be creative in tackling challenges. A process for my students looks something like this. First, we have the students. Ik ben Selene en speel hobo. Ik ben Isis en ik speel hobo. Ik ben Henny en ik speel hobo. Ik ben Bilou en ik speel hobo. And the teacher. Ik ben Irma en ik speel hobo. There is a program with learning goals. Here, they will learn all about the 6th, 8th time signature in music. After six lessons, they will be able to recognize, embody, sing, play, read, present and be creative with this time signature. A playlist is connected to the online environment where they can find lesson goals, progress enhancing hints and information to support their practice. Learning goals are connected to a playlist. This is a list of pieces in which they can practice, in this case, the 6 8 time signature. Welk liedje vind je op dit moment? Je hebt een hele lange lijst met liedjes weer gekregen. Omdat we weer... Ik vind Greensleeve zo heel leuk. When they have chosen the piece they want to practice, they will use the preparatory learning function sheet to help them find gaps in their knowledge and to connect these to familiar material. Dan veranderen de noten niet, alleen zeg maar hoe je de noten speelt. Mm -hmm. Dus bijvoorbeeld boos is een beetje dun dun. <laughs> en bijvoorbeeld verdrietig is een beetje du, du. <laughs> To plan their practice, they use an agenda organizing the students' activities, including when they have time to practice their pieces. <laughs> To describe their process and plan their practice session, they use logbooks. We see here things opschrijven van welke dingen je um, hebt nieuw geleerd. Students use repertoire sheets to describe their end goals in steps, organized as rubrics, 
that create an overview of possible strategies to tackle challenges. They also have a card deck with strategies and creative solutions to help them during their practice sessions. Die gebruik ik ook uh, op das, dat blad is ook met uh, rubrics. Daar staat dat. The online environment is shaped around their needs. Each lesson, they tell me what they think they need to be able to practice well during the week. These needs shape the online environment. Lesson content can be found online. Links to repertoire, tutorials, play-alongs, feedback videos, presentations, cooperative projects, assignments, personal notebooks and background information. The personal online presence of all participants leads to a lively dialogue. Here are for example liedjes and so, and then it goes on zeg maar helemaal door. And then I had to choose a song, and we play it now. After working on pieces for two weeks, they reflect on their practice through the executive learning function sheet to create an overview of where they are in the process. Dus het jet is bedoeld om bijvoorbeeld hulp te vragen bij iets wat je niet begrijpt. After this reflection, they prepare for their presentation. At the moment, a presentation consists of three or four recorded pieces of choice based on the learning goals described at the beginning of the lesson series. These video presentations are edited and shared with friends and family. In the future, a presentation could also be a small concert. After the presentation, they reflect with me on concluding the learning functions using the closing learning function sheet. To give students confirmation of their achievements, I add the played repertoire to their personal repertoire lists. We reflect on their practice process with the closing learning function sheet. And we reflect on the feedback from friends and family. They also receive achievement cards on key rings. So, how did I arrive here? I used design research for developing the online environment and the learning tools for process thinking in three cycles. The cycles consist of designing the online space and the learning tools, testing, evaluating, making improvements and starting the next cycle. Thomas Vorchek provided me with feedback on the online learning environment. I also used action research to reflect on the program and develop adjustments of my teaching and the students' learning. Using case studies, reflections on recorded lessons, reflections on my teaching and students' learning and questionnaires. Three colleagues observed my recorded lessons to compare outcomes with my own findings. Bernadette Polle, Wieke Karsten and Marit van der Wey. Adrie de Vught was my supervisor during my research. So, let's compare before and after. <laughs> I started with students who showed limited autonomy using a teaching style that could be more autonomy supportive. I focused on autonomy supportive teaching giving my students some responsibility for the lesson content, space to explore more choices in repertoire and have more choices and strategies to achieve their goals. When I started, the online environment reflected teacher-driven content. Now it is an online space for students and teacher with many choices in repertoire and learning strategies. I implemented a cooperative learning space online. Students' autonomy is an essential component of the online content and there is an ongoing dialogue. In the beginning, I had no clear concept of how to stimulate relatedness. 
Now, it is a program that reflects a teacher-student dialogue and embeds relatedness, creating a safe space for students within the class, at home and in connection to their peers. Before, it was a program with limited reflection on effectiveness. Now, the program explains the purpose of goals and repertoire and through reflections and achievements lists and cards on key rings, shows students effectiveness. Goed plan staat daar al hoor. Ben ik eigenlijk al wel heel erg trots op. There is a drawback. Creating an autonomy supportive blended program is time consuming. It involves learning to work with the online application, creating content, helping students to work with the online application, creating a personal differentiated learning environment and reflecting on the program. In stimulating autonomy, active learning and self-regulation, the teacher needs an overview on learning processes. In this approach, it is not sufficient to simply teach a musical or technical learning goal. There is a constant monitoring process by the teacher of students' development. I needed to expand my knowledge of repertoire to find a vast number of pieces per playing level, focusing on the same learning goals. To provide students with repertoire choices, I had to learn to dissociate technique and musical aspects from strategy use and creative solutions to develop a clear image of learning functions and applications. It took time to implement existing learning tools meant for classroom education into a music learning program and to tailor tools to my classes and age groups. Implementing the self-determination theory in my teaching has resulted in increased motivation in my students. They are happy to attend oboe classes and to take their instrument out in public. They enjoy creating video presentations for their families and they also have insight on what they have achieved in the school year, which is a lot compared to last year as an increase in motivation has resulted in more effectiveness. Using aspects of active learning in my classes made students realize that learning to play the oboe is a gradual process and they have learned that every step has learning functions on which they can reflect. Through cooperative learning projects, the second year students have inspired each other and shared their choices in repertoire motivating one another to play twice as many pieces. The power of planning, focusing and reflecting on the practice process exceeded my expectations in young students. They all learned how to describe end goals and to create a personal strategy plan to get there with the tools. I learned how to create an online environment. Students learned how to work in the online space and together we shaped it to aid their practice process. I didn't expect the online environment to be such a great observation tool, giving me insight in my teaching style and the lesson content. Creating a flipped classroom makes it possible to deepen knowledge during the week and in free time, weekends and holidays. Do, do, re, do, do, re, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, mi, re, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, re, do. The space is flexible, so it is easy to navigate, making it possible for students to create a personal playground. And playing is what we want to do live and online, sharing our music with friends, family and audiences. Combining learning to play music with learning to learn creates extra value to music classes because self-regulation can be used in all aspects of life. But learning to learn in combination with music classes creates active, self-regulating, autonomous musicians hardwired for excellence. And that is my goal for my teaching practice.